We have a brand new tornado warning in effect. This is for southwestern Montgomery County as well as northeastern Wally, Waller County in north. Uh, Western Harris County right here. Uh, you can see that we do have southwestern parts of Montgomery County included in this tornado warning. It is radar indicated. The tornado is located near Waller as well as near Prairie View. Now keep in mind Prairie View is where you have Prairie View A&M. If you have any uh, friends or family there, notify them of this tornado warning. This cell is moving towards the east rather rapidly 50 miles per hour. Seek shelter if you are within this warning. You can clearly see this intense line of showers and thunderstorms working its way towards the east. This is the only tornado warning we have right now, and Montgomery County is within our viewing area. This is the only tornado warning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the velocity. What exactly is this? Well, this is a tool that helps us get an idea of where we may see a little bit of rotation where you have those red and green colors coming together can indicate where there is a little bit of rotation and that could translate down to the surface in the form of a tornado looking like this is where we may see that tornado just to the east of walk uh, of Waller and then also kind of towards the southwest of Magnolia. This is where the general vicinity is of that rotation. That's where we're probably seeing that tornado. Again, this is a tornado warning. It is in effect until 1130 PM Central. So for the next 26 minutes, we have this tornado warning in effect. Again, this is for southwestern Montgomery County, northeastern Waller County, northwestern Harris County. You are under a tornado warning. If you have any family or friends here, make sure they are notified of this tornado warn storm moving rapidly. Don't go out and try to view this cell because you won't see a tornado. It is dark out there. This is in the heart of pine country in Texas. There are pine trees. It's rain wrapped. Seek shelter now. Go to an interior room. Get away from windows. Cover yourself with a mattress and a bathtub. I know this sounds silly, but put a helmet on the kiddos if they have a bike helmet. That's going to help protect them from flying debris. Taking a look at the track of this, going to move into Magnolia within the next 13 minutes, 16 minutes, it's going to move into Pinehurst, this uh, damaging thunderstorm possibly producing a tornado. So again, southwestern parts of Montgomery County included within this tornado warning until 1130. So for about the next 24 minutes, we have this tornado warning in effect. Now, there are no other tornado warnings for the Brazos Valley or for our viewing area. That's the good news. Just this last uh, minute cell popped up with this tornado warning. It's what we've been mentioning all night that these storms can quickly become tornadic. We have extreme levels of shear that are moving over the Brazos Valley as the storm system moves in. Let's take a look at the current watches really quickly. Here is what we have. We have a tornado watch in effect until 4 a.m. for the red shaded counties. Now, I know this is showing Brazos Valley included within the tornado watch. Technically it is, but the thunderstorms have moved off to our east. The severe threat is zero here in Bryan College Station. That is the good news. Also the same for Caldwell Brenham. You are now no longer in a severe threat, but as you get off towards I-45, that tornado threat still is there, and there is a tornado watch in effect until 4 a.m. Let's go ahead and take another look at that tornado worn storm. This is for southwestern parts of Montgomery County. We have that tornado worn storm. It is moving toward Prairie View, probably just moved through Prairie View, eventually going to move towards Magnolia as well as Pinehurst. Let's go ahead and track this out for you again. If you have any friends or family here, notify them. Here we go. Taking a look at where this storm is moving again, Oklahoma, Pinehurst, <clears throat> Magnolia all included within this warning going to move through these areas in the next 15 to 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> Oklahoma, you have about 22 minutes to uh, before this storm moves in. Go ahead and seek shelter now. Go into the interior part of your home. Go into a basement, a storm shelter, whatever you have. Protect yourself from any flying debris. <clears throat> Taking a look at the rest of the Brazos Valley, nothing else going on in terms of severe 
thunderstorms out there uh, or tornado warnings in the heart of the Brazos Valley. Just keeping an eye on these storms that are working their way towards the I-45 corridor tornado threat now to the east of Hempstead. So that's the good news. But again, um, Pinehurst as well as Magnolia, Oklahoma, all going to see a potential tornado within the next 15 to 30 minutes. Now, notice a few storms trying to develop off towards the south and the west of Bryan College Station. These will not be severe in terms of any tornadoes. There could be a little bit of small hell gusty winds with these storms, but if you step outside now, once that lightning has passed, you're going to notice that it is a lot cooler out out there, the winds have flipped around to the northwest, ending the severe threat for central parts of the Brazos Valley. But again, we do have that tornado warning that is in effect for southwestern parts of Montgomery County at this hour. That is in effect until 1130 p.m. So that tornado warning for the next 22 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the velocity again. This is just a tool that gives us an idea of where some rotation may be occurring. It's a good tool to use uh, to possibly spot any type of rotation. Now, the rotation may have shifted a little bit. It's hard to see. It's a little bit messy out there, especially with those high pine trees kind of making things a little bit uh, blurry out there. But notice that we do have a little bit of red and green color coming together in between Waller as well as Magnolia. This is possibly where we have that tornado just to the west of Magnolia, keeping an eye on that where you have those red and green colors coming together that is indicating winds coming toward and away from the radar and that gives you an idea of where there may be a brief spin up or possibly a uh, tornado so looking like it's probably just to the west of magnolia at this hour and that is where we have that tornado warning in effect for the next 20 minutes again southwestern parts of montgomery county are included within that tornado warning. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the radar here. Uh, notice that Waller, Magnolia all included in, in that tornado warning. Waller, that tornado threat has shifted toward the east. Now let's go ahead and take another <coughs> look out. You can see that not much going on here in Bryan College Station. A few showers going to try to work their way back in from the south and the west, but not expecting any tornadic activity. Now if you have family and friends in the Woodlands or Conroe, you definitely want to go ahead and seek shelter. There's not a tornado warning there yet, but if this storm continues its motion, it's going to move into the Woodlands as well as Conroe within the next 45 minutes. So we'll continue to track that as this races towards the east approaching I-45. Again, this is the only tornado warning that we have right now. We had one a little bit earlier for Burleson County. There uh, were some reports from some viewers of a possible tornado between Caldwell and Snook. We are trying to confirm that. We have not confirmed it yet. If we do, we're going to bring you the latest. We've sent out our crews to eastern parts of Bryan College Station. There are damage reports there. We've also gotten some damage uh, video in from a viewer. We've posted that online. You can go and check that out. There are reports of power outages across the area. We've also posted those online, so you can go check all of that out. We also have some uh, safety procedures that you can take to ensure you are safe during severe weather. But right now, only that one tornado warning for southwestern parts of Montgomery County at this time. Uh, all other areas are in the clear right now. Uh, again, just that one tornado warning at this time, and that is for southwestern Montgomery County. We'll go ahead and take another look at it. You can see that uh, this is where we have that tornado warning. We'll go ahead and put the tracker on it as well. <clears throat> that way you can see where it'll be and at what time. Magnolia, 10 minutes away. Pinehurst, 14 minutes away. This storm is moving so rapidly, though, it could move ahead of schedule. Go ahead and seek shelter right now. You probably just have a few minutes to do so. So go ahead and make sure you are seeking shelter if you are in Magnolia or Pinehurst because this storm is expected to move uh, within those two cities in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we'll go ahead and let's take a look at the velocity. So I've tossed this around a lot tonight. What this is, is just a tool to uh, help us identify rotation within a storm. So 
We'll take a look at this. Uh, looking like that rotation is possibly toward the south and west of Magnolia, where you have those green and red colors coming together. That gives you an idea of possible rotation that may lead to a tornado. So we're taking a look just to the southwest of Magnolia, possibly right in here. There could be a little bit of broad rotation, not as defined as it <clears throat> was earlier, but that tornado warning is still in effect for the next 18 minutes. It's in effect until 1130 p.m. Now we do have that tornado watch for eastern parts of the viewing area until 4 a.m. Now there was a severe thunderstorm watch, but that has expired. So disregard the severe thunderstorm watch information on here. That has recently expired and this is just yet to update, but we just have that tornado watch in effect for eastern parts of the Brazos Valley until 4 a.m. I know that we have Brazos County included on here, but the severe threat, the tornado threat, has shifted off toward the east. So that is the good news. Uh, this just has yet to expire, but it'll likely expire for uh, Bryan College Station in not too long. But areas a little bit closer to I-45, unfortunately, uh, going to see this uh, tornado watch continue over the next few hours. Uh, but again, tornado watch in effect until 4 a.m. And we do have a tornado warning for southwestern Montgomery County and that is in effect until 11.30 p.m. Central Time, so for the next 17 minutes. So let's <clears throat> take a look at that tornado warn storm. You can see it is likely moving through Magnolia right now, and this is eventually going to work its way off toward the east, possibly impacting the woodlands as well as Conroe. So let's take a look and see if we can get any updated information on this uh, tornado warning. See what the National Weather Service is saying. It looks like there may be an updated warning on this tornado warn storm that is moving towards the east rather quickly, about 50 miles per hour. Okay, it doesn't look like we have an update right now, but looking like uh, this tornado warn storm still possibly uh, producing enough rotation to uh, be warned by the National Weather Service of Houston and Galveston. We'll try to get an update for you all to see if there have been any sightings of this tornado. There have not been. <clears throat> it is still radar indicated, but it's looking like the threat has shifted to the east of Montgomery County. So it now looks like Waller and Harris counties are where the main tornado threat is at this time looking like Montgomery County is all in the clear. So that is good news. And of course, Hempstead, the tornado threat is to the east of you. Still going to deal with a few showers and storms working their way in from the south and the west, but just going to see some cloud to ground lightning, heavy rain, some gusty winds, small hell tornado threat now towards the east of Hempstead. And it is to the east of um, Montgomery County at this time, looking like the main tornado threat has shifted into Waller as well as Harris counties. Let's take a look at the radar across uh, the entire region. Notice that that large line of showers and storms working its way from the west to the east across the state. And look at all the lightning, all that electricity within this storm system. You see all those yellow areas on this map. That is all a lightning within the showers and storms. Pretty intense area working its way from west to east. Could see some tornado threat across eastern parts of Texas. The Piney Hill Country of East Texas going to see that tornado threat continue into the early morning hours. And also, as the storm system starts to really get its act together, it's going to pull in some moisture onto the back side of the system into the cold air. And you know what that's going to do? going to dump some snow across northwestern Texas, just to the north of Abilene, up towards uh, Wichita Falls. Going to see some snow there. As you head to the east across northern Texas, going to see snow there. Even Dallas, Fort Worth, going to get in on some of that snow. So it gives you an idea of just how dynamic this storm system is. And that's why we're seeing the severe weathers, because it is rather potent. Again, see that tornado warning just to the north and west of Houston. That's the tornado warning that 
we're keeping an eye on. Uh, the tornado threat now has shifted toward the east of Montgomery County, so no longer a tornado threat there. That is the good news, but Harris County, yeah, you're still within that warning area. So we're keeping on that storm. Oh, look at these storms, though. They're really getting their act together, probably some damaging winds out there and uh yeah so we are we do have our crews out just so you know um on the east side of college station and brian there are some reports of damage actually near college station high school our crew is out there right now they're surveying the damage we're gonna bring them live to you to give you an update and we also have a video that has come into our newsroom from a viewer of some power line uh issues during the straight line winds when those storms moved through Bryan and College Station. We're going to post that uh, here. We're going to show it here in a little bit. We've posted it online if you want to go online and check it out. Now, earlier we had a tornado warning that was in effect. Um, it was actually between uh, Snook as well as Caldwell. There's a possibility of a tornado that touched down there, according to a viewer. We haven't confirmed that, but we are trying to let's let's um show you that video that we received earlier from a viewer look at this <coughs> wow this shows those winds moving through shows lightning and you can see the explosion look at that holy cow this is from danny mcconnell we want to thank you for uh sending us this video but absolutely terrifying video and this is another indicator of you don't need a tornado worn storm to cause dangerous conditions out there. Just a severe thunderstorm, even a garden variety thunderstorm with 50 mile per hour winds and cloud to ground lightning can pose a hazard to your health and to your property. So you don't need to just have a tornado warning for there to be damage. And this is a good indication of that. So again, taking a look at the radar, we have that one tornado warning just to the southwest of the woodlands as well as Con Row here in Bryan College Station. A few showers trying to work their way in from the south and the west, but nothing severe. So that's the good news, nothing severe here. Notice that there is a little bit of an intense cell trying to develop just toward the south of Austin, maybe near the San Marcos Kyle area. This will eventually work its way into the Brazos Valley. No more severe weather expected, though, in the heart of the Brazos Valley. Cool air has moved in. Northerly winds have stabilized the atmosphere. It's cooler out there. It is drier out there, so we're not going to see any severe impacts here in central parts of the Brazos Valley for the rest of the night. So that is the good news. But again, we do have that tornado warning that is in effect uh, just to our east. Uh, you can see it toward the south and west of Conroe and the woodlands. There is that tornado warning that is in effect. And uh, it is radar indicated. And we're trying to get an update on this storm to see if there uh, has been any confirmation of a tornado or if it is still radar indicated. Earlier, this was a radar indicated tornado warning and it is still radar indicated. It is uh, moving uh, over Pinehurst. It's moving east at 50 miles per hour. It's going to move into the woodlands uh, very soon within the next couple of minutes. So go ahead and make sure that you are uh, seeking shelter if you are within this tornado warning. Um, you'll we'll go ahead and take a look. Yep, moving into woodlands at this time. And we do have a crew that uh, is out near College Station High School. Uh, Tristan is out there. There are reports of damage, and uh, they're going to bring us an update. We are going to toss it over to Tristan right now. Tristan, what do you see out there? Good evening, guys. We are right across the street from College Station High School, right off of Victoria, where it looks like the weather has died down just a bit. It's still a little bit breezy. There's a couple of raindrops coming out. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell right behind me, though, there is a trampoline that has gone through a roof. I am joined with one of the homeowners. This is David. So, David, what were you guys doing when you heard the trampoline come through the roof? So, um, me and my buddy were watching a movie, and I was going to make some tacos in the uh, kitchen, and my brother comes down and says, come out come outside look the trampoline's moving around so we go out and we look and all of a sudden bam a loud crash and we see two poles come down through 
the ceiling and it just came right through the roof. Did you guys hear any rattling going on before? Oh, so, yeah, we could hear we could hear the trampoline rattling around, and that's what caught our attention to go look at it while we we're just you know hanging out for the night. And then all of a sudden, it just busted through the roof. Let's step aside so our viewers can at home can see the trampoline just a little bit more. We also have like the fences down just a little bit. Um, is there any other damage to the house? Uh, nothing other than the fences and the roof. So that's all that we've uncovered right now. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have buckets under the where the holes are? Yeah, up? they're currently leaky through the two holes that came through the roof. So we have buckets under trying to catch all the water. Awesome. Well, take a, another quick look at that trampoline. He said there's a hole from where the guard to the trampoline was. He went right down to the hole into the roof. So we got right now for you reporting call station Tristan Lewis KX News. Right. Thank you for that report, Tristan. And those trampolines, extremely dangerous in high wind events. Um, they can get blown around pretty easily, and that is what happened there. Okay, let's take a look at the tornado warning that we have in effect. This is no longer in the Brazos Valley, but we do have a tornado warned storm moving towards the woodlands and Conroe, heavily populated areas. They've really exploded in development over the past uh, couple of decades. So a uh, highly populated area is about to see uh, a tornado warned storm move in. Now we're taking a look at the velocity product. This um, gives you an idea of where there may be some rotation that may actually come down to the surface in the form of a tornado where you have the reds and greens come together that's where there's that possibility of tornadoes and it looks like there is a little bit of red and green coming together just toward the south and west of Conroe. That makes sense. That's where the woodlands are. That's where this tornado was reported to be according to the National Weather Service radar indicated. But this is gradually going to work. Well, not gradually. It's going to rapidly work its way east towards Conroe, moving east at 50 miles per hour. So. If you're in Conroe or if you have any family in Conroe, you want to make sure that they are aware of this tornado warning and nighttime tornadoes are extremely dangerous. Don't try to go out and see it. You can't. It's dark. There are tall pine trees and it's rain wrapped. So uh, you definitely want to make sure that you seek shelter. Go into an interior bedroom. Make sure that there are no windows in that interior bedroom. Make sure that you are covering yourself. Get in a bathtub, put a mattress over it. If the kiddos have a helmet, a bicycle helmet, put that on them to protect them from flying debris if a tornado does actually impact your area. Let's take a look at where the uh, tornado is going to impact. Going to impact, uh, we're going to go back and adjust this. It's looking like this may be a little bit off, so I'm going to go back and readjust this track, but it is near the woodlands right now, and it is going to move towards Conroe uh, very quickly as this storm is moving toward the east at about 50 miles per hour, maybe a little bit of a northeastern component to it. Conroe, it's going to move in in about 12 minutes. Now, this storm does have the potential to really start speeding up, so seek shelter now. You don't have 12 minutes. You probably have about six or seven minutes, so go ahead and get in your shelter. It's going to move towards the beach as well and cut and sheet within the next 20 minutes. So this storm moving towards the east, a little bit of a northeasterly component to that motion within the past few frames. So it's going to impact Conroe. This storm going to cross over I-45, so if you have any family or friends driving along I-45, give them a heads up because this storm going to eventually move over I-45. And uh, of course, you don't want to be on a road or in a car when there is the possibility of a tornado. Let's take a look at the rest of the Brazos Valley. Nothing really going on in terms of severe thunderstorms. There are some rain showers moving into the heart of the Brazos Valley, but the severe threat has ended, uh, and that includes here in Bryan College Station. So that is the good news. The severe threat is now over for Bryan College Station. Cooler air has worked its way in. So uh, good news that we have seen that severe threat die off for a large part of the Brazos Valley. Let's take a look at the current watches. The severe thunderstorm watch has expired that was uh, in effect for Lee County. 
This has an updated on there though, that severe thunderstorm watch uh, no longer in effect. Uh, we do have a tornado watch in effect for the county shaded in red. There is a tornado watch in effect for the red shaded counties until 4 a.m. Saturday. Now, I know this shows that Brazos County, Bryan College Station is still within the watch, but that is no longer the case. No, I should say they're still in the watch, but that severe threat has ended. This will likely expire uh, pretty shortly, but there's no more tornado threat in Bryan College Station. That tornado threat now uh, farther east as you get towards I-45. So we'll take a look at a regional view of the showers and thunderstorms pretty widespread across the state of Texas, extending north into southeastern Oklahoma as well as Arkansas. This system really starting to get its act together. Notice the snow that is starting to wrap around on the west side uh, of this storm system. Uh, the moisture wrapping in Texas, northern parts of the state going to see some snow. Yes, snow. That gives you an idea of just how strong this system is. We'll go ahead and take a look at these snow totals. Again, uh, there's no tornado warning here in the Brazos Valley, so that's a good news. So we'll take a look at these uh, forecast snow totals for northern parts of Texas as well as southern Oklahoma. So that storm system going to pull in some moisture into that colder air, and we're talking about some snow in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Yes, Dallas, you're going to see some snowflakes flying tomorrow morning. Could see a dusting on the cars, elevated surfaces. And as you get towards the northwest of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, including Denton, Gainesville, Sherman, Denison, going to see some accumulations, possibly one to two inches. Now, as you get to some of the higher elevations out across northwestern Texas, uh, out towards Mineral, Mineral Wells, the Graham area, could see a little more than two inches. And of course, that snow threat extending up into southern Oklahoma. Any travel plans along I-35 or Highway 75, there could be some snow flying tomorrow morning. That best snow threat will be from about 3 a.m. Saturday until 10 a.m. So again, this just gives you an idea of how intense this storm system is. It is rather potent for uh, this time of the year. And We'll go ahead and take a look at the latest uh, tornado warning. Again, we do have one tornado warning in effect. This is um, out of the Brazos Valley, but this is a storm that is working its way towards uh, Conroe. Already moved through the, the woodlands and is moving towards Conroe rather rapidly. Let's go ahead and put a tracker on this storm, and we will go ahead and track this out as it Okay, it looks like the National Weather Service has just allowed the warning to expire. That warning expired at 1130, so we no longer have a tornado warning in effect. There are severe thunderstorm warnings for parts of uh, Harris County, but we don't have a tornado warning in effect any longer. With that said, this line of storms can produce tornadoes rather quickly, a pretty conducive environment for tornadoes. So. You definitely want to make sure if you're out ahead of this line, it is always safe to just take tornado warning precautions. Even though it's only a severe thunderstorm warning, you are under a tornado watch until 4 a.m. So definitely out ahead of this line, make sure that you are taking the proper precautions. Again, tornadoes can quickly uh, spin up at any time along this leading edge of the shower and thunderstorm complex. We have another crew out. We have Mike, who is in Bryan near William J. Parkway. There is reports of damage there. Mike, what are you seeing right now? Snap really loud. I can't snap. Whistle. I do that. Oh. Hey, Chris, we are out here in Bryan on North Baker Road, just off William J. Bryan Parkway. It is pitch black behind us. That is because we were just told by BTU officials that power in this area is widespread out at least for a few blocks now just minutes ago we saw btu workers fixing this power line right behind me i know you guys can't see it because it's so dark but this power line had fallen earlier in the night the power at the house right next to us is out now as we were driving down to this location to find you guys some damage we noticed not big damage but we noticed enough that it made us say hey there must have been some really strong winds that came through we saw the scooters down we saw signs that were standing earlier this afternoon blown on their side. We saw a couple branches in the street 
that Sonny had to navigate her way around as we made our way down William J. Bryan Parkway. It's not the tornado of a century. It didn't end up being the, the storm of a decade here in Bryan, but there was definitely some damage that we have seen. And here off North Baker Road, just next to uh, Texas, it's widespread power outage. It's also worth noting that the intersection of Texas Avenue and William J. Bryan, the uh, street traffic signs, they're out. There are two police officers there directing traffic, uh, so be careful if you're driving on Texas Avenue throughout that area. We're going to pack up the road here and look for some more damage, give you guys some more reports. The rain is actually picking up a little heavier as we speak, but for now, reporting live in Bryan, Mike Lucas, KX News. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that radar and take a look at why that rain is picking up where Mike and Sonny were located. You can see that we do have some shower activity starting to fill in behind that line of storms that moved through that severe line. They are no longer severe here, but we are dealing with those showers working their way in from the south and the west, looking like it's getting rather moderate. There could be a few cloud to ground lightning strikes out behind this line of thunderstorms. So definitely stay inside, go to survey that damage tomorrow once there's daylight. That way you can uh, be safe and you don't want to uh, risk being struck by lightning and there could be down power lines as well. So you want to avoid staying away from that. Now, there are some severe thunderstorm warnings to the east of the Brazos Valley. As you head towards I-45, the northern suburbs of Houston, this is where we have the severe thunderstorm warnings. San Jacinto County, Montgomery County, Northwestern Liberty County, Northwestern Harris County, Southwestern Walker County, all within a severe thunderstorm warning. These storms are moving towards the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. Winds gusting in excess of 60 miles per hour. That could cause some damage. Let's go ahead and track these storms for you as they move off towards the north and the east. So we'll go ahead and get a tracker on this for you. If you have any family out here, go ahead and let them know that there are some severe thunderstorms that are working their way through north parts of the Houston metro area. So taking a look at tracker, you can see the times on these storms of when they're going to move through each town. So we're talking about Tumal going to move through in seven minutes, Conroe in about uh, 14 minutes, kind of moving through now, but we're going to see that heavier activity work through in 14 minutes. Eastgate, 17 minutes, 28 minutes for spring, and we're going to see it work its way into Cleveland within the next 40 five minutes. So that's when you can expect to see some of the heaviest activity from this line of showers and thunderstorms. Luckily though, no tornado warnings are being reported. So that is the best news of all. But with all that being said, as you've seen with the video that we've shown and with our live reports, it doesn't take a tornado warning to cause damage. Severe thunderstorms are just as capable of producing damage. So make sure you take these severe thunderstorm warnings seriously. Now, we're taking a look at the velocity. The velocity gives us an idea of when there may be a little bit of rotation, and that rotation possibly, when it's strong enough, can come down to the surface. So the red and green colors, whenever they come together, it gives you an idea of where we do have that rotation. So taking a look at the velocity product, you can see that there are a couple areas along that leading edge of the showers and storms where you have some of those red and green colors coming together just to the southwest of Conroe, as well as a little bit farther south within that line towards the east of Tomo. There could be some areas of some slight rotation, especially this area to the southwest of Conroe. A little bit cluttered, hard to see, but there could be um, some brief spin-ups within this line of severe thunderstorms. So go ahead and I would take tornado precautions even though we just have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect because these systems are notorious, especially with the amount of low-level shear that we have. These uh, storm systems are known to quickly spin up tornadoes, and that's why there's a tornado watch in effect until 4 a.m. with this complex of storms because it can quickly produce tornadoes. So again, let's take a look at the Brazos Valley. 
not too much going on other than some showers working their way in. These are non-severe showers and thunderstorms working their way in from the south and the west through the Brazos Valley. So uh, the tornado threat has now ended for Bryan College Station as well as uh, Huntsville, or not Huntsville, but I should say Hearn, Rockdale, all those areas in the clear. Brenham, you are in the clear. Hempstead, you're in the clear of severe thunderstorms. Now, it is possible that there could be some cloud to ground lightning uh, so I would definitely make sure that you wait to go out to survey any damage. There could also be downed power lines. So I would wait until the sun rises tomorrow to go out to see if you have any downed trees or any downed fences. Um, we did have a tornado warning <coughs> in between Snook as well as Caldwell. There was no confirmation of the tornado, as radar indicated, but when we looked at the velocity, it appeared that there was some pretty tight rotation. We had a viewer uh, suggest that there may have been a tornado that they've seen. We're trying to confirm that. If we confirm it, we will relay the information to you, but there is that report. Uh, and then again, we had another tornado warning just to the east of Hempstead. That was another radar indicated tornado warning. That has now shifted east. That tornado warning has now expired. So right now, just uh, some showers and storms working their way through the Brazos Valley. Just some general garden variety showers and storms right now, other than what you have out towards the east as you get towards I-45. That's where we have more severe thunderstorms that are uh, continuing at this hour. Uh, just that, again, just those showers and storms out to the east are the ones that are severe. San Jacinto County, Montgomery County, Northwestern Liberty, Northwestern Harris, Southeastern Walker counties, all within that severe thunderstorm warning. Winds of 60 miles per hour possible as these storms move to the northeast at 35 miles per hour. So we're going to see some impacts in Riverside. New Waverly, Pinehurst, Cypress, Katy, all going to see impacts from these showers and storms as they work their way towards the north and the east at about 35 miles per hour. We'll go ahead and put a tracker on this for you just to give you an idea of where these storms are going to move uh, over the next 40 minutes or so. So here we go. If you have any family in this area, let them know that there are these severe storms that are still continuing at this hour. I know it's getting rather late. The last thing you want to deal with are severe thunderstorms, but unfortunately, there are some to the south and the east of the Brazos Valley. Spring going to see impacts in the next six minutes. Uh, Porter Heights, 12 minutes. Humble, 25 minutes. And then 40 minutes, Huffman. Uh, that's where we're going to see this severe thunderstorm uh, complex move over the next uh, 40 or 45 minutes. Again, 60 mile per hour winds with these storms. There is the possibility that a brief spin up could occur within this line of storms. That's why we're continuing to track these for you because there is that tornado watch in effect until 4 a.m. And we want to bring you the latest information. There could be spin ups within this line of severe storms. So again, no tornado warning right now, but it is possible that one could uh, quickly develop. So go ahead and uh, if you're within the tornado warning, I would go ahead and seek shelter just to be safe. Now take a look at this large complex of showers and thunderstorms. This started early this afternoon across western Texas and is just continue to advance towards the east throughout the day into the overnight hours. And again, from the Arklatex region all the way down through the Brazos Valley, extending into the upper Texas coast, we're dealing with these showers and storms. And look at all the lightning within this. Just some very powerful thunderstorms. And the severe threat going to continue into the overnight hours as you head into parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, eventually in the Mississippi, and that severe threat we're going to extend into Saturday for parts of Tennessee as well as Alabama, Georgia. So any family out there in Dixie Alley or in the south, let them know the high impact weather possible tomorrow. Now, what's interesting with this system is it's starting to wrap up. Notice that. See this kind of comma shape right here? 
starting to really get its act together. It's pulling moisture into the colder air mass and you see the snow starting to break out just towards the north and west of Abilene, extending west towards Lubbock. Yeah, this band of snow going to rotate towards the east as we head into the overnight hours into Saturday morning. Parts of North Texas, southern Oklahoma going to see some snow. Wow. Yeah, they're going to see some snow with the system. So areas that saw tornado warnings today are going to wake up to snow accumulations. So just a really potent dynamic system. Uh, that's why we've been giving you a heads up throughout the week because this is a very uh, strong storm system. And when you pair the cold air mass and the warm air mass together, you know that's going to cause some showers and thunderstorms. And that is exactly what happened. Let's go ahead and take a look at those snow accumulations that are in the forecast. Look at this for northern Texas. Now, we're not going to see any snow here in the Brazos Valley, but we are going to see colder temperatures. But look at this snowfall forecast for northern Texas, parts of Dallas, Fort Worth. Going to see snow. There were tornado warnings here today, a confirmed tornado. Going to see snow tomorrow. Just towards the north end of parts of Texoma, could see one to two inches of snow. Now, as you get off towards the south and the west of the Dallas Fort, Met, Dallas Fort Worth Metro, you start to get into uh, some hillier areas where you have uh, elevations of 12 to 1500 feet. Could see a few inches of snow on the higher elevation. You kind of eliminate some of that warm layer at the surface and we're going to see snow continuing in the southern parts of Oklahoma up toward Tulsa, Norman, Oklahoma City. Going to see a little bit of snow as well. The Washita Mountains going to see some snow, so going to be a really pretty scene across eastern parts of Oklahoma. Again, we're not going to see anything here, but it just uh, again gives you an idea of how potent this storm system is. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at radar again and get an idea of just kind of what's going on. No severe storms here in the heart of Brazos Valley, but we do have severe storms a little bit farther east along that I-45 corridor, we do have those severe thunderstorm warnings that do include Conroe, Katy, the Woodlands, Spring. You are all within this severe thunderstorm warning. San Jacinto County, Montgomery, Northwestern Liberty, Northwestern Harris, Southeastern Walker County is all within the severe thunderstorm warning. This is going to continue for the next several minutes. 60 mile per hour winds, Tornado watch in effect for these areas though, so a brief spin up is possible. Keep that in mind. And we don't really have much going on here in the Brazos Valley, so I'm going to toss things over to Gabriella. Our full crew has been on staff. They're out surveying damage, talking to uh, the viewers, finding out just exactly what has happened across the Brazos Valley as these storms move through. Gabriella, what is the latest information that is coming in at this time? Hi there, Christopher. Now we want to show you a few videos, uh, one from around here in the Brazos Valley and others from across Texas who are experiencing these storms. If we can pull up the first video right now from Twitter. This is from Danny McConnell from Spring Meadows neighborhood in South College Station of William D. Fitch. This was uh, about an hour ago, I believe. And if you see the large lightning strike, just wait for it to happen again. It'll happen again. The video will replay. There it goes, causing sparks. In South College Station, this was taken shortly, a short time ago. So we go to the next video now. This is in uh, near Colleen, in, in the Colleen area. So heavy rain was hitting there a little while ago. Our sister station, KCEN, is telling people to stay safe and slow down on those roads. Now this is some footage from, again, sorry, <laughs> this is from Colleen. So again, stay safe and slow down on wet roads. And that is from our sister station in KCN. A lot of rain going on there. If we go to the next video, though, um, this is from the San Antonio area from actually my predecessor, Vanessa Croy, a friend of our station, obviously. So this is some pea-sized hail coming down near Scenic Oak, uh, Oaks off of I-10. This is from our sister station in San Antonio. So, yeah, some pea-sized hail and a lot of lightning there, Chris. Yeah, this is a very electric a lot of lightning within all the storms that have tracked through Texas. It's been a very eventful night. It could have been worse, uh, but it was still a very eventful night across not only the Brazos Valley, but the Dallas, Fort Worth, Metro, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, all areas saw severe weather tonight. It was just kind of a, of a line across 
Texas, just moving, like I, I still have to kind of think about it because I'm not as weather inclined as you are, obviously, but when it's when you think about it, it's, it's rough. Yeah, and what's even hard to believe, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, Gabriella, parts of Dallas, Fort Worth were under a tornado warning today. They're gonna wake up to snow accumulation tomorrow morning. So it gives you My an goodness. idea of how strong this storm system is. My gosh, okay, so we do have another video. If we can pull up that last video. Um, this is from Gatesville, again, from our sister station at KCEN. Um, there's, there's obviously some rain in that area. It doesn't look like too many people are on no. the roads. You see you a couple people. You can see that people. hill, though, yeah. yeah. Maybe pea size hill. Mm -hmm. but Maybe it, a little larger. Yes. Wow. But look at that. Oh, gosh, the that lightning. lightning. There it is. Well, it's good that not too many people are on the roads. Hopefully, those people are on their way home. Um, this is from, let's see, this is from the San Antonio area as well. Look at that. Wow. The, the stoplight just falls off. Okay, it's going to happen again. Let's look at that. My gosh. Wow. Oh, yes. Wow. That video is by Carissa Hernandez. Again, that was given to our sister station in San Antonio. Oh, my gosh. I, I Stunning video. And those are some straight, that looks like straight line wind. Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of people think it only takes a tornado to cause damage. That's not the case. Straight line winds, lightning, hell, all of that can cause damage. So anytime you're under a warning, you need to go ahead and take advice and seek shelter just to be safe. Mm -hmm. And just to quit, so you say straight line winds, you got the, the hail, and but it, is it, can it be just one of those things? Like it doesn't have to be a combination of yep. all those things. It could just, just be mentioned. one of them. Yep. Okay. And straight line winds can cause just as much damage, if not more, than a tornado. Mm -hmm. And how, how, I guess, what is the, the miles per hour of those straight line winds? What, how, how do they have to be considered that? To be considered severe, it's 58 miles per hour. Uh, 50, 58 mile per hour wind gusts can cause damage, but typically when you get winds up above 70, that's when you start seeing a lot of structural damage. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of straight line winds did we see tonight across Texas? Um, we saw there were 70 mile per hour winds that were um, indicated in the severe thunderstorm warning that was for the Brazos Valley, or for a large part of the Brazos Valley, including uh, Robertson County as well as Brazos County. Uh, I don't know if we have gotten any observed, like any observed readings of 70 mile per hour winds, but that's what was listed in the warning. So that would have caused a uh, pretty significant damage. I'm sure once daylight uh, comes tomorrow, we'll see the true extent of what occurred uh, throughout the uh, overnight hours in the Brazos Valley. But we did have uh, 70 mile per hour winds in the warning, so it is possible some of those may have actually occurred and we may not know until tomorrow morning when we see the damage, when you see the trees uprooted or the fences blown down or the trampolines, uh, you and know, a block down the house. road. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, typically 70 mile per hour winds can cause a lot of damage. Thank you, Christopher. And, and I know once we get all that information, like you said, confirmed from the National Weather Service, what have you, we will update you on our air, but also on our app and yeah. on our kagstv.com. That's our website. And the severe threat uh, is now east of the Brazos Valley. That is the good news. Um, you know, we did see severe storms. We saw damage. It could have been a lot worse. Luckily, it wasn't. Uh, as bad as it could have been. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate of that and hopefully uh, daylight doesn't uh, bring uh, more damage than we're expecting. Yes, okay. So um, I'm not sure if we have time to watch that first video again from our area in South College Station, if, if we have more time to watch, there it goes. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, here's what some of the storm was doing in South College Station, um, I think roughly about an hour ago. Um, you're going to see it again. It's going to play again. And the, the lightning strikes are just wow. astounding. Like, well, and also, go. if you all were tuned in a little bit earlier, our reporter, Tristan, he and Sonny were out uh, in a neighborhood that actually saw a trampoline blow into a roof of a house mm -hmm. and went through the roof. There were actually the legs of the trampoline went through the exterior of the roof into the home. So uh, there were some pretty strong winds out there to cause damage like that. Yes, but luckily everyone in that home is okay, yeah, correct? Yeah, they're okay. Yes, see, that, that's always good. But uh, of course, having a trampoline through your home is not always the best. Yeah, that's very scary. But like you said, at least the people that were in the home are safe. Okay, that's great. Well, 
Again, we'll keep you posted on our app, our KAGS app, and on our website, kagstv.com. Thank you, Christopher, for keeping us updated throughout the evening. It's, it's been a rough one, but I guess the worst is over. The correct? worst is now over. All right, awesome. So stay with us online, and we'll see you when, next week.